When you think of plastic surgery, there are a few things that immediately come to mind. Augmentation, facelifts, but today we're going to talk about a different procedure that can help a lot of people who are a little self-conscious about their ears. Dr. James Nakbar from Scottsdale Plastic Surgery joining us to talk about this procedure. It's good to see you again. Good to see you, Stephanie. I don't think I know what osteoplasty is. Actually, otoplasty. Otoplasty. So, oto comes from the word for ear. Okay. So, otoplasty is to change the shape of the ear. Okay, so we're talking about people who don't like the way the, the appearance of their ears, whether it's kind of off their... Almost um, always the problem is that it sticks out too much. There are a number of different, less common things that can be wrong with the ear, but most of the time what we're going to be talking about today is patients who have sort of an ear that sticks out too much and who are wanting to make it so it's a little bit less obvious. What does that come from? Just genetics? Just the way you were born? Or I think it's hard to know for sure. Uh, often it is seen at, at birth, and in fact, if you have a baby who's just, just born and the ear is out, it's been shown you can actually tape it back and, and that will stick in the sense you hold it back for a while and the, and the cartilage will reshape to what you hold it, but once they're even a few months old, that doesn't work anymore, and so um, I basically have to do surgery if you wanted to improve it. Okay, so let's go to this surgery option. Um, are we talking about visible scars, and how, how do you do this? So I do everything through the incision in the back of the ear. So, of course, that's a much more visible location when the ear is sticking out, but then we make the incision in the back. We can do all the work from back there. Push, uh, push the ear back. I always don't want to flatten against the head side of the head, but move it back, and then the only scar is in the back there where it's really not noticeable. So who are your who are your patients? Do you find people of all ages? Um, well, basically, uh, there's one group of children, say about five years old. They'll start noticing it, and, and I usually wait till the child themselves notices that it's a problem. Uh, but if you can do it when they're five or six years old, you can you can do it before they get to be about eight, when the other kids start teasing them more. Um, I, I've been seeing a lot of adults who have come in. I may have had the ears sticking out for a long time, and but with the hairstyles for both men and, and women being a lot longer, it didn't really bother them. And now with the, the current styles being a lot shorter, the ears a lot more visible. They're and they're more self-conscious, yeah. So let's um, take a look at some pictures because I think oftentimes we can really um, see the, the dramatic impact that this can have on somebody's life when you do just take um, a, a little bit of that and push it toward, you know, the back of the head. Right, so we're both reducing the, the fold there so the ear is folded back in and also uh, reducing the size of the conchal area, the large uh, area of cartilage. And the third thing I do is then use some sutures to hold the whole uh, structure back to the side of the head. So you can see all three of those changes here. The ear was a lot more noticeable before and now it's uh, much closer to the side of the head and, and uh, uh, looks much more natural. In this picture and the next one, you can see how you know, from the, even from the back, you could tell, as well as the front, when they, when they protrude a little bit. Right, and so these are um, uh, people, uh, boys and girls, men and women, who've, uh, who've had the ears sticking out too much. And here, again, you can see all those changes. From the back, of course, you can uh, notice it very significantly, um, as well as from the front. So again, these are several pictures, I and mean, these pictures are on the website too, so if, if someone wants to come back and look at these pictures again, they can. As we look at this, can you tell me, so we, after, this, after you've had this procedure done, do you have to wear some big, large bandage on your head that kind of, you know? Not so much. You know, I put one on during surgery to help people when they're waking up, but then once they're awake that afternoon, that evening, they can take it off. They really don't have to have it on um, past that. Children will sometimes use something a little bit more um, that might take a little longer. And so for a patient like these that we're seeing, how quickly would you see the results from the before and the after? Well, you'll see the result right away. When you take the dressing off that afternoon, you'll see that it's improved. There will still be, of course, some swelling, and it takes uh, probably several months for all the skin to, um, to go away. But um, I they see the results right away. So the re and the recovery is, I mean, are you able to get back to life as usual? I would say people, people typically go back to work and their activities and so forth within a few days. It's okay. very little discomfort, very quick recovery, very simple, straightforward. All right. I learned a lot about this. I, yeah. Tell me how I say the word again. Otoplasty. 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 Okay, you can learn a little bit more about otoplasty by finding Dr. James Nakbar at Scottsdale Plastic Surgery. The number right there on your screen is 480-289-5300. There it is right there. You can get more information as well at plastic.org.